regarding the spiritual power of the Holy Prophet وسلم, he says that this is my belief that uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, his spiritual power was such that no other prophet has ever been given that in the world. This is the secret of the progress of Islam that the Holy Prophet وسلم, his power of attraction was excellent and extraordinary. <clears throat> and then in his conversation there was so much impact that anybody who heard he fell in love with him. He says that the people who were attracted by him, he cleansed them and purified them. And then describing this point, he, that uh, Holy Prophet وسلم, what sort of uh, changes he brought about among his companions, he says that look at the condition of the, look at the condition of the companions, there is no one who was a liar. While the fact is, when you uh, uh, look at the earlier condition of the Arabs, so they are seen into the deepest uh, lower uh, stage. And uh, in eating up the wealth of the orphans, and uh, they were very bold in committing all types of atrocity, uh, absurdities. And they used to, as if they, from the top to toe, they were completely trenched into filth. But such a big change was created by him in those people. The parallel of that is not to be seen in other nations. And uh, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu miracle, this miracle uh, is uh, such that only this much is uh, able, is enough to open the eyes of the world. The Promised Messiah Sallallahu Alaihi says, <coughs> that to reform a person is very difficult. Uh, to reform one person is very difficult job. But here, the whole nation was created and prepared that they, in their faith and their loyalty and devotion, they showed such an example that they laid down their lives like the goats for the sake of truth. And the one who, which he followed, which they followed, the fact is that these people did not remain earthly people. Rather, because of the teaching of and the guidance given to them by the Holy Prophet and his advice, they actually became heavenly people. And pure attributes were there, and qualities were there. And this is such an example which we present to the whole world. And he says that this reformation and guidance uh, it was the result of that uh, prophecy which uh, Allah Almighty gave the name Muhammad to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as he was praised on the earth because he, he, he filled the earth with peace and with the good morals and with the good piety. He filled the whole earth with that. Even nowadays we see <coughs> that those people who are just they cannot deny this fact that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam extremely illiterate and uh, vulgar type of people, he reformed, he made them as educated people and people of God they were converted to. A few, few years back, a Jewish scholar once uh, came to see me and he said that despite the fact that uh, we Jewish people, we are not allowed to go to the uh, <coughs> Masjid Aqsa, but I went there, but I saw all of it. And the detail that he told me, uh, that is very long to mention. Anyway, he said that uh, many a time, the, uh, the, the person who was showing me around, he doubted that, uh, uh, I doubted that he is not a Muslim. Every time, Whenever I mentioned anything which indicated that uh, they are Muslims uh, and uh, 
in order to assure these people that a Jewish person said that uh, I also pronounced the kalima La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah <coughs> when I saw the mosque fully. So then the uh, custodian of that uh, said that although you have pronounced the kalima but still I am doubtful that you are a Muslim. You have seen everything. Now you tell me what is the reality about that. He said that uh, you say you are right. I am not a Muslim and I am a Jewish person. And so far as the reciting of the kalima is concerned that la ilaha illallah I believe in that. There is no one worthy of worship is kept Allah. And uh, the Muhammad Rasulullah that I said that he is the Prophet of Allah that I also believe because I I know the history of the Arab people. What was the condition of Arab people at that time I know. And the Arabs, uh, the condition of the, those people before the claim of the Holy Prophet, only that can be rectified and reformed by a Prophet. The worldly leader cannot change their condition. So therefore, despite the fact that I, uh, I whether I believe in the Holy Prophet or not, but I do believe him to be sent, to have been sent by God. So anyway, so that person, uh, on a worldly way, he, so he admitted this great revolution brought about by the Holy Prophet <coughs> So therefore, even today, when people see with the eyes of justice, so then extraordinary changes brought about by the Holy Prophet among his uh, followers and companions. So they cannot but to admit this, that uh, certainly he was the Prophet of God. <coughs> the companions regarding the companions regarding their extraordinary status and uh, the extraordinary changes which uh, were created among them the promised Messiah on one occasion he says that uh, look at the example of the companions and the companions actually their examples are such that uh, they are the example of all the prophets and Allah Almighty loves the actions. These people, they laid down their lives like the sheep and their example is such that uh, uh, then one citadel of worship was created by Adrat Adam and, uh, and there is the concept of a prophethood that has been going on since the time of Adrat Adam. And uh, and then he says that uh, people were not able to understand but uh, the companions they have showed that, that example in a beautiful way and they told that this is what is called the purity and truthfulness and then he says and then the state of restlessness as uh, they spent that is also the companion of that the example of that is not seen there these were the extra this was the group this was the people who were very difficult to follow. Their hearts were filled with conviction and belief. And when the perfect conviction is there, so then gradually, first of all, when the belief is there, then gradually, uh, first they are inclined to spend their wealth. And when it incre increases, then the people who have this belief, they are ready even to lay down the lives. And then, in describing the excellence of the prophets, on one occasion, Hadrat promised Messiah said, La tulhihim tijaratun wala bayun an zikrillah. This is mentioned in the Holy Quran. That no commerce and no trade makes them forget about the love of Allah, remembrance of Allah. And he says this single verse is good enough to explain the status of the companions. They presented very excellent sacrifices and even the English people, uh, they are uh, admitting this. And to make such sacrifices is sur really surprising for all the people. He says that they are such stalwarts that uh, the remembrance of Allah, uh, they ca it cannot be taken away from the commerce or trade. That is to say, in the love of Allah Almighty, they have so much uh, 
excellence, that the worldly attractions, how much uh, strong they may be, but they cannot interfere with their thoughts and belief. And then he says that remember that the perfect people uh, of Allah Almighty, servants of Allah Almighty are those regarding him, Allah Almighty says, La tulhim tijaratun wala bayun an zikrillah. That when the hearts are having a close link with Allah Almighty and they become in love with Allah, then they do not go away. And one condition of that can be understood in this way, that uh, just as a ch child of someone is sick, so wherever a person goes, whatever work he may be, be doing, but his thought and his mind is always towards his son. And similarly, those people who are who have developed a close relationship and true relationship with Allah Almighty in any condition, they cannot cannot forget God Almighty in any case. So these companions uh, of the Holy Prophet وسلم, they had that close uh, relationship and attachment with Allah Almighty they had developed that it was no question that in any way they should be unmindful of God Almighty or they may be desisting or holding back from offering any type of sacrifice. There are so many examples of that. Hadrat Khubab, Hadrat Khubab, regarding him, it is mentioned that when his time of death came, so he, he showed so much fear uh, of Allah Almighty that he brought his uh, a coffin and uh, wrapping clothes uh, and saw it and uh, then he said that uh, it was a good clo cloth and he said are you going to give me so much uh, uh, burial sheets and started crying and he said the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uncle Hadrat Thamba Hamza he just had one sheet to be in which the body was wrapped and when they covered the feet the he head was bare and when they covered the head then the feet were bare at that, the Holy Prophet وسلم, then some grass was put on his feet to cover it. So then with great fear of Allah, he said that during the time of the Holy Prophet وسلم, one dinar or dirham, I was not the owner of that. I did not possess any wealth. And now, because of the blessing of the Holy Prophet وسلم, because of the blessings of Allah and Allah Almighty accepting these sacrifices, Allah Almighty has given me so much wealth that in, there is a box in the corner of my house. There are 40,000 dirham in that. And he said that Allah Almighty has given me so much that I'm afraid that if uh, that uh, Allah Almighty, as if Allah Almighty has uh, given us all the uh, reward in this life and in the life to come, uh, the reward that is going to be given, that uh, reward has... Uh, we, have, we may not be deprived from that one. And in the last sickness through which he passed, when the companions came to inquire about his health, and they told him that, uh, uh, and uh, gave them the assurance and consolation that you are going to meet the companions, then he started crying. And also he said that don't think that I am I have cried because of the fear of death but uh, I have uh, I have cried that the companions you have mentioned their status is very high whether I am allowed to be ca called uh, their brother and he said that the people who have passed by before us they the worldly wealth from which we are benefiting they were not able to benefit from that and the status of uh, fear of Allah Almighty was so much that he considered himself as very weak and very humble. And it was the fear of Allah. And this concern was there that after the death, if God Almighty, whether Allah Almighty is pleased with me or not. So his prayer was all the time that Allah may please, be pleased with him. His sacrifice and the service for religion was no less than anybody else. Hadrat Ali, Rizi Allah he led the janazah of Hadrat Khubab and when he was Hadrat Ali was Khalifa, he led his janazah and he mentioned some of the praiseworthy points about him. And from those very words, one can understand the status of Hadrat Khubab. And he said, Hadrat Ali said, Allah Almighty have mercy on him. 
he with great devotion and with uh, attraction he accepted Islam and then he had the honor of migration and the life he spent that was the life of a um, of a mujahid a servant of Allah and uh, there were horrible and very frightening They were very horrible and he, he had to pass through that and he showed the example of patience. Hadrat Ali said that uh, Allah Almighty does not waste away the rewards of these people who perform the good deeds and the status of Hadrat Khubab in the sight of Hadrat Umar, that was wonderful. Look at that. Once uh, Hadrat Umar he called upon Hadrat Khubab and he asked him to sit on his seat and said that Khubab, you are worthy that you can sit with me on this seat. I don't think that apart from Bilal, there is apart from Bilal, there is no one else who deserves to sit with me on this seat. He, that Hadrat Bilal, in early period of Islam, he accepted and he suffered a lot of uh, suffering. And Hadrat Khubab said that, O Amir al leader of the believers, certainly Bilal is worthy of that. But the fact is that uh, in order to, there were people who could save uh, Bilal from the idolaters. And uh, somebody purchased him and set him free. But uh, in my case, there was no such person who could protect me from this torture. And there was one day I remember that the non-believers, they caught hold of me and put me into the fire. And one very unjust person, he put his feet on my uh, on my chest and it was impossible for him, for me to go out from the fire. And uh, my back was burnt uh, with the fire on which I was made to lie. And then Hadrat Khubab, he uncovered his back and showed there were uh, lines, white lines uh, indicating the burns. Uh, and uh, he told that uh, on very burning coal uh, I was uh, made to lie and my uh, fat melt and uh, the color of my skin uh, turned into white like this. Hadrat Khubab, Hadrat Khubab uh, in, the, in the battle of Badr and uh, Khandak uh, ditch and uh, Ohad as well. And despite all that, uh, on the, at the time of the death he was worried whether Allah Almighty is pleased with him or not. And then Moaz bin Jabal, regarding him, it is mentioned and uh, that he was offering the Tahajjad prayer and used to worship for a long time. And the prayer, Tahajjad prayer, those people who were close to him, they have uh, mentioned that they, he used to say to Allah that, Oh my ma Master, all the people are asleep, their eyes are closed. Oh my Allah, he, who is the uh, living and uh, the sustainer of everything. I beg your paradise from you, but I am a bit lazy in it. In action I am a bit lazy, he said. And I am weak in running away from fire and I am very weak. And I know that there is a fire of hell and there are so many good things that I have to perform to go there. But uh, I am very weak in Ips abstaining from those weaknesses. And O oh my Allah, you give me the guide, guidance from you and give me that guidance which may be with me on the day of judgment, a day of judgment when you are not going to go against your promises. Uh, in the way of Allah Almighty, he used to spend quite a lot and because of his expenditure sometime he used to run in debts. Kaab bin Malik's sons Uh, regarding Hazrat Muaz, he says that Allah Almighty's uh, treatment with Muaz was very, uh, very strange. He was very generous and his prayers were heard. And whatever he asked from Allah Almighty, Allah Almighty would give him that. And uh, there was a special treatment of Allah Almighty with Hazrat Muaz. And if there were debts, loans, then Allah Almighty would make the arrangement to pay off. And he was uh, very peculiar wisdom and understanding was given to him. 
uh, these companions, the love of these companions with Allah Almighty, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, uh, they also loved him, and uh, the love of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Because of that, they used to have the love of Allah Almighty, because his uh, power of purity uh, that created this understanding of the love of Allah Almighty in their hearts, as it is mentioned. The Holy Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His uh, spiritual power uh, that had created this change in them. Otherwise, these uh, tales, uh, these tales of uh, love and affection, uh, uh, are impossible to have. The the love that they had uh, because of Allah Almighty that was also such, which is uh, 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 unparalleled. As the Promised Messiah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has mentioned, Hazrat Shamas, uh, Shamas bin Usman. has recorded one incident that has become an example <coughs> and uh, the highest standard of sacrifice for the sake of Allah has been established in jang ohud in the battle of ohud uh, while the mention of other sacrifices are there that uh, he he put his hand uh, in front of the face of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as it is uh, hadrat shamas as well like Talha, he also performed a very outstanding role. Hadrat Shamas, he stood right in front of the Holy Prophet and he took every attack upon himself. And the Holy Prophet regarding Hadrat Shamas, he said that if I, I give any example of Shamas, then I would give it as the, a protective shield. That on the day of Uhud, he became a protective shield for me on that day. He was standing in front of me on the right and left. He always protected me till the last moment. The Holy Prophet وسلم, whenever he looked at him, he said that he was uh, with, I see Shamas fighting with great courage and boldness. And when the enemies, uh, when they were able to, they were successful in attacking and uh, the Holy Prophet وسلم, fell down in swoon and at that time, Hadrat Shamas was standing there as the protective shield. Uh, until the moment that he himself was severely injured, he was brought to Medina. Hadrat Umm Salma said that this is my uncle's son and I am the closest to him. Therefore, uh, the, the treatment uh, of him should be done at my house. But because of the severe injuries, uh, only one and, a, one and a half a day he passed away. The Holy Prophet sallam, said that Shamas uh, may be buried in his own clothes as all other uh, mart martyrs they have been done. One companion, Sayyid bin Zaid was his name. He was the brother-in-law of Hazrat Umar and he is the one uh, who because of the acceptance of religion of Islam when Hazrat Umar uh, uh, it, um, held, raised his hand to kill him so then uh, his, uh, his sister came in and he was injured and that was affected Hazrat Umar and uh, uh, Hazrat Umar was inclined to acceptance of Islam. Hazrat Sayyid, uh, uh, regarding his, uh, the, uh, that he did not stand in need of any worldly thing. There is one thing that he had, he was the owner of a land and he used to live on the income of that. And uh, and there is another plot was also along with that uh, of a lady, and that lady claimed uh, uh, about the um, plot of uh, Sayyid. Hadrat Sayyid said that uh, there is no need to fight the case, and he completely abandoned his ownership from that aid and gave it to that lady. And he said that uh, I have heard from the Holy Prophet وسلم, that anybody. Uh, anybody who uh, takes uh, any part of the uh, land which is uh, does not belong to him, then he will be suffering the blame of uh, many fold lands on the day of judgment. So I don't want to have this blame blame on me. And uh, people should not be able to say that I have taken hold of the uh, property of a lady or anybody for that matter. And now it has. Uh, come to know uh, to be known that's why he is handing over 
So he completely, in order to make him absolved from this uh, blame, he was very full of prayer. So he prayed for that uh, uh, lady, that if this uh, lady is unjust, that Allah Almighty should punish her. And uh, a bad end of that lady may be there. And the people say that uh, that lady became blind and uh, that died in that state and that was a point to, from which people could learn a lesson. To say the truth and never to be afraid of any other people, that was the way of the companion. Adra Sayyid bin Zayd, it is mentioned regarding him that one day in Kufa, the governor appointed by Emir Muawiya and he was sitting in the Jamia Mosque and Hazrat Sayyid was, uh, came there and the governor showed him respect and received him like that and made him sit along with him and during that period uh, one person from Kufa he came and he and he started abusing Hazrat Ali Hazrat Sayyid he became very angry with that person and uh, he did not uh, uh, he did not do that uh, as the, in the presence of governor he should keep quiet but he spoke out and he said that i have heard from the holy prophet sallallahu that umar hadrat ali uh, abu bakr asman uh, hazur talha saad and Sayyid abdur rahman bin of and hadrat ali they are going to be in paradise and there is a tenth one the tenth i, I do not utter the name when he was asked to uh, press for them. And uh, then he said that the tenth was Sayyid bin uh, Zaid. He himself was there. There is one narration reported by him that the greatest uh, interest, that is unlawful thing, uh, is to attack the honor of a moment, of a believer. And now this is the one which Muslims have forgotten today. And uh, on the, from the larger scale to the lower scale, in, in smaller matters as well, we see that Muslims, they are, they are attacking the honor of other Muslims for their own benefit. And then a companion, Hadrat Suhaib, uh, Rumi, is also mentioned. When, with the command of Allah Almighty, then the Muslims were allowed to migrate. Then Hazrat Suhaib also uh, intended to migrate. He, he earlier came as slave and then he made the progress <coughs> and uh, he started his business and became very wealthy person and he acquired a lot of wealth. When he was about to migrate, so then the people of Mecca said that uh, you are you are came as a poor slave to this area and uh, the money that you have earned from here we are not going to allow you to take that money with you when you migrate he said that uh, he said okay i leave my wealth here then you will allow me to go if i leave the money anyway he half of the his uh, possession he left for the people and then he planned to migrate and when he traveled to Medina, so some uh, people from Quraysh, they followed him. And so he was a very bold person. He was very good archer and very expert in this. When he looked at the non-believers, so then uh, he spread all his arrows on the ground. And uh, looking at these people, he said that, Oh Quraysh, you know that I am a better archer than you. And be, before I end the last uh, uh, arrow, you you cannot reach me. And after that, my sword is there. And I will have to fight with, with that with you. So let me go in peace. And uh, in lieu of that, uh, the remaining money which I have kept in a certain place, you take that. So these, uh, uh, so great wisdom and by sacrificing his wealth, he protected himself and his children and reached Medina safely. Hadrat Suhaib, when he came to the Holy Prophet ﷺ, and he mentioned that how he spent all of his wealth, he has protected his life and his faith, and he is here. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said 
that you have not uh, done a bar- bargain of loss. This is a good bargain that you have done. Every companion, they have got their unique style. On one occasion, Hadrat Umar asked Hadrat Suhaib that you feed the people uh, so much. Uh, I, I wonder whether you are spending too much money on that. Hadrat Suhaib said that uh, the of- food I offer that I offer to the poor people that is in accordance with the instruction of the Holy Prophet. He said, he said, advising to me then one, that the best among you are those people who feed the people and uh, they in popular, uh, in use uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh extensively. You spread this practice. This is a good thing to do. And this is the condition of the good people. And he says that this word of advice which uh, which I learnt and heard from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and uh, so then I have kept it uh, very firmly and except in that case uh, I do not spend the money when unless it is fully justified. The status of Hadrat Suhaib uh, in the sight of Hadrat Umar was great. Hadrat Umar Razila Ta'ala no, uh, he made a will that Hazrat Suhaib should be leading his janaza prayer, funeral prayer, and until the moment the uh, n- uh, next caliph is uh, appointed, he would be the leader in prayer. And Hazrat Usama, who was the slave who was freed by uh, Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Usama was very fortunate. Uh, who was uh, he was fortunate that he was given the certificate of the love of the Holy Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam loved him so much. Hadrat Usama says that the Holy Prophet uh, Hadrat, he used to take Hadrat Hussain and Hadrat Usama uh, he used to put them on both thighs and uh, used to say that oh my Allah uh, love these people these uh, both of them because I love them but when there was a question of tarbiyat or training or religious matter then only the commandments of Allah Almighty was followed by him. So then this personal love was no more there. Hadrat Usama, the Holy Prophet وسلم, during the period of Hadrat, the Holy Prophet وسلم, he was quite young. At the age of his death he was only 18. But uh, in some uh, wars he had the opportunity of uh, taking part. It's mentioned that uh, in one battle a non-believer came in front of Osama and he immediately uttered the kalima. But uh, Hazrat Usama still killed him. That he has offered this kalima only because of the fear of death. Hazrat Usama says that I presented this incident to the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So then the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that did you kill this person even uh, uh, even after he had uh, recited the kalima? I said that he only recited the kalima for his protection. The Holy Prophet ﷺ said, did you open up his heart to see that? And then say that, uh, did you kill him despite his uttering of the kalima? Hadrat Usama says that the Holy Prophet ﷺ, he repeated this sentence so many times that I wished that uh, I had not converted to Islam before this day. Hadrat Usama says that now then I prom- made a firm resolve that uh, in future uh, whenever a person what visitors the kalima I will never ever kill I wish that uh, this might have been this point might have been understood by the Muslims today in the name of Islam they are doing injustice to other people uh, non-believers among themselves the Muslims are killing their Muslim brethren now the Syria the war in Syria it is mentioned for the last few years since it started that hundreds upon upon hundreds, thousands upon thousands of people have been killed by Muslims. And those people who utter the kalima themselves, they are killing the other people who also utter the kalima, are in the name of that kalima. In Yemen, the people who recite the kalima, they are being killed, and other tortures are being inflicted upon them. They are made subjected to that. Allah Almighty give wisdom to these Mumin believers, these Muslims, that they should not be raising simply uh, raising the slogans of the love of a holy prophet but also act according to his noble example but the fact of the matter is that these people in the name of islam they are trying to satisfy their self egos 
and they do not uh, know the ABC of Islam. And in order to uh, uh, um, uh, establish their superiority, that is their goal. Uh, on the tongue, uh, they utter the name of Allah, but in the heart, only self-ego is there, their own self is there. Uh, in the world, at this time, Allah the Almighty, in order to pro, uh, produce uh, and create their true taqwa righteousness, He has sent the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu waslam. So by looking at the condition of these Muslims, they cannot be reformed unless they believe in the promised Messiah. We have to be grateful by looking at their bad condition and uh, we must increase in our sentiments of grateful gratefulness to Allah Almighty that He, he has enabled us that we have believed in that guide who has been sent by Allah Almighty in this age as a true servant of the Holy Prophet And he has told us about the great excellence and the status of the companions and uh, asked us to follow that noble example. He told us that the examples of the companions are, uh, what wonderful example is there, we should uh, adopt them and sh you should follow them. So, this is the way in which if we keep that in front of us and we understand his advice and uh, then we can tr become true Muslims. In one place he says that the fact of the matter is that uh, unless a person uh, is uh, not uh, going away from his selfish ego and desires and uh, for the sake of Allah Almighty he is nothing. He is actually making uh, running in loss but when all the desires and objectives he is completely away from that and be, and becomes empty handed and with pure heart he goes to Allah Almighty then Allah Almighty gives him and Allah Almighty is always there to help him but the condition is that the person should be ready to die and uh, and one should be ready to sacrifice every honor in the way, sake of, for the sake of Allah and he says that this world is temporary but the taste of that, the joy of that is only felt by those people who leave it for the sake of Allah. And this is the the reason that a person who is very close, as we have seen in the example of the companions, when they leave this world, then Allah Almighty gives more. But these people were always worried about their future and end. And, and, and they were completely lost in the love of Allah. And he says that the person who is very close to Allah Almighty then in this world Allah Almighty spreads His fame and popularity in the world. And this is the thing for which the worldly people, they do so many things to get some title or they may be posted in a place of respect or a chair in a court and their name could be written among those people, honored people. So all the honor is given to those people and everybody gets the acceptance in every heart who leaves everything for the sake of Allah Almighty and he becomes ready to leave all these things. Not only ready to say, but actually they do it like that. And the, and all those people who leave everything for the sake of Allah, they are given everything and they do not die until they get manifold of that what they have spent in the way of Allah. Allah Almighty does not leave any debt on, on his part. But the fact is, but the people who believe in this and those who really know the reality of this thing, there are very few people like that. Allah Almighty enable us that uh, we, following His uh, word of advice, we uh, uh, we are following Allah Almighty and the Holy Prophet Sallallahu and we become become those people who follow this. I am going to lead a janazah hazir, which is of Amtul Mujid Sahiba, after, uh, who was wife of uh, Chaudhary Nasr Am Sahib, Naib Amir, UK and Na and he is in charge of uh, Central Department of uh, Construction. In, on 9th of January, uh, she passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna ilahi rajaun. Mawli Abdullah Sunori Sahib, the companion of the Promised Messiah, she was great granddaughter of that. In uh, after, She has been resident since, uh, since 1978 closing to close to the mosque and coming for her prayer. She was very hospitable, looking after the people. She was Musiya and uh, and uh, related with the Khilafat, with the connection with Khilafat and always 
uh, she advised the children to establish this relationship with Khilafat and always advised about regularity in prayer. She did a very good uh, training of the children and also the children in the area. She also uh, was able to, to teach them the reading of the Quran and in Lajna in the Department of Hospitality and also during the Jalsa Salaam she was as working as a Nazima and uh, Chaudhary Nasir Ahmad Sahib, and there are four daughters she has left behind. Sadar Sahiba, Lajna, and the, the, these, uh, the present and the former uh, Sadar Lajna have written that she was a loving lady and, uh, and everybody felt that uh, uh, and when she took over the responsibility of Naz, Nazma hospitality, she performed the duty very diligently. Secretary Ziafat, she also performed the duties and uh, she offered say, services very modestly. Allah Almighty exalt the status of uh, the deceased and all the good uh, qualities may continue in his progeny. As I said, after the namaz, the janazah, Zohar and Asr, I will be leading the janazah prayer. So I will go out and lead the janazah. You please straighten the rows.